Hello viewers, Mike Stevens here. I'm at BMW Australia headquarters in Melbourne this week to have a bit of a design tour of the new BMW M2, probably the last manual M car that will ever be made, so that's pretty big. Check out our video for that. I'll put a little link up the top and in the description. And also the BMW XM, which is the subject of this video. And to make sure I'm not just a bodiless, a bodiless voice in this whole video, I've roped in Mr. Alex Inwood. Hello everybody, well. welcome to is this the most controversial BMW of the last 12 months, do you think? Mate, I feel like every new BMW they reveal is the most <laughs> controversial BMW. Yeah, fair call. But this one in particular, because remember the, um, the concept of this car? Mm. Man, controversial. And it's a big deal, this, because it's not just another BMW SUV. This is the first bespoke M car in 40 years or 40 odd years. The first bespoke M car since the M1. That's a good point. I was thinking earlier that it's their first dedicated SUV, but it is literally the first bespoke M car since the M1. Remember the M1? God, times have changed. Oh. And there is actually a tiny little nod to the M1 at the rear of the car as well, which looked better on the concept, but we'll come around to that in a moment. Yeah, so in this video, we're going to do a full sort of exterior walk around, talk you through the headline figures, jump inside and have a look at the cabin, because if you think the exterior of this car is pretty full on, wait until you see what's going on inside. It's pretty flash. And we're going to answer some of your questions uh, about this car as well. I'm going to censor out some of the more derogatory ones about how it looks because, <laughs> look, I've got to say, it's interesting. It is striking. I kind of like you this. You are tiptoeing around some thoughts there, mate. I kind of like this spec as well. So what is yeah. it? It's Cape York Green, yeah. I think. With... It is the best spec, I think. And what are these gold highlights called? Night, Night gold? Night gold, yeah. It's very bold, like I said. But I think in this sort of colour scheme, it works. They're very complementary. I think, and I hope it's not inappropriate for me to say, but I think there is a bit of a, a Chinese market focus with the styling here, and particularly the colour of this spec. There is a... You can configure it with a red body and the gold highlights, which mm. is really quite bold. Full on. But red and gold are very iconic colours in Chinese culture. There are a few Ferraris getting around the internet with um, true. red paint and gold yeah. wheels. And look, it's not I the like first that. time BMWs used gold highlights. I think maybe the M5 CS might have been the first most recently. Yep. And uh, CSL, M4 CSL has the gold of in the course, headlights, yeah. etc. So, But you can option, all, everything on here that's gold, you can option in black if you prefer. I would not do that. I think if you're going to go loud yeah. and proud with a car like this, and just quickly pan down at that wheel. We'll get Look to the that. wheels in a bit, but man, 23 inches. So it's like a ceiling yeah, rod. <laughs> 22 is a standard, but 23 is a no-cost yeah, option, sure. and this one has the 23s. And the gold highlights Wait, on that. Wave your hand in front of that for me, Alex. Just for, for some, some context. Uh, yeah, holy moly. Wow, it is, like, this is an iPhone. <laughs> It is massive, and look how low that profile is on the rubber. I mean, people say this quite often, but these days the brake discs are as big as wheels used to be. It's, yeah, it's absolutely. They, they are 18-inch brake discs, up, is, is my understanding. So it is a... Everything about this car is bigger than, bigger than life, I think. Yeah. So speaking of which, should we talk about some of the numbers? Oop. Oop, Steve, Almost just knocked over a light then. Let's talk about the numbers, uh, because like the car itself, they are big. Perhaps the biggest one is the price. 297,900 bucks. So 300 grand, it's 300 it, grand. It's more than that once you get it on the road. Yeah, very true. Um, Actually, as a FEV, put you on the spot here, is it eligible for any uh, carbon credits or anything like that? What do they call it? No, no, I don't think so. Uh, but they have just changed the rules for FEVs, right? Because oh, previously right. FEVs were sort of in this no man's land yep. of uh, getting no sort of incentives. But well, You get a good wallop of luxury car tax on this <laughs> one. <laughs> but it is a FEV, so you mentioned that. So it's got a 27 and a half kilowatt hour battery in, uh, in between the axles, so it can do between 82 and 88 k's of electric only range. That's great. I mean, for a car this big, what did they, what's the weight? 2.6, 2 2.7 tonnes. Yeah. So getting that amount of range, let's see if it actually does it once we drive it, mm. but getting that amount of claimed range is pretty impressive given how big and how heavy yeah. the rolling resistance of For those For a little tires. more context on that weight, the overall size of the car, if it's not clear with Mr. Six Foot Two inward over here, it's... Overall size is between an X5 and an X7, but the overall, was it the overall length or the wheelbase matches the X7? Wheelbase is the same as X7. Right. So, and this is two seats only, whereas X7 is three. So you get some extra room in the back seat, which we'll get to in a little bit. Two rows only. Two rows only, yeah. What did I say? Two seats. I was like, what? It's what? A, what? <laughs> yeah. Freudian slip. So, uh, okay. Figures under the bonnet. 
4.4 litre twin turbo V8. That's the uh, combustion engine part. So the engine itself makes 360 kilowatts, 650 newton Which meters. Which is plenty of power in its own right. Yeah. So turbocharged, hot V turbo is my understanding as well. But it also has an electric motor in the gearbox, which makes 145 kilowatts, 280 newton meters. So together, the combined output that BMW is claiming is 480 kilowatts, 800 newton meters. 480. So even though it does weigh 2.6, 2.7 tons, it can go from 0 to 100 in 4.3 seconds, which is swift for a car of this size. You and said weirdly, that this is 4.3 for the manual and 4.1 for the auto. So at the, at the uh, traffic light Grand Prix, it's going to be neck and neck between <laughs> oh these God. two. How devastated would you be in an M2 to get whipped by this big two and a half ton SUV? Yeah, let's see what happens when you get to a corner though. True, uh, touche. But speaking of that, this thing shouldn't be too bad to drive because even though it is, well, it should be excellent to drive is what I should say mm. because BMW has pretty much thrown every chassis system that it has on the shelf at it. So it's got active roll stabilization, rear wheel steering, um, Adaptive dampers, it's got an uh, ELSD on the back. So pretty much every piece of um, engineering and, and chassis hardware that they have to make this thing go around corners, they've thrown it at it. So can't wait to drive it. I wonder where the launch event will be. Good question. A track launch would be pretty brave. <laughs> it would be. Imagine going chewing through these tyres because yeah. those tyres are not I've, I've, be. I mean, a lot of people say that about EVs and obviously big heavy fevs like this as well as the tyre wear would be incredible. Yeah, so I'm not too sure about regen braking either, um, whether it has it, how many stages it has, um, because that will obviously increase your brake life, uh, the life of your brake pads, yeah. and et cetera. But um, should we do a quick exterior walk around? Yeah, come down here. Okay. Actually, pop around the other side and see if you can start it up without starting it up, just to get the brake lights on. No problem. Or put your foot on the brake, I guess because those are some pretty big and bold LEDs in there. Look at that. That is lively. <laughs> Not gonna miss that on a dark day. So you mentioned some, a few little nods to the M1, which yeah. is this car's successor uh, four decades ago. Uh, they are here, the roundel etched into the rear glass. And it does go through the roof a little as well. The line follows through there. I mean, on the concept, they were quite tall. Yeah. That section that cut into the windscreen. And I do like how flush the glass here is mm. with the uh, yeah, you're with right. the D pillar, which is quite nice. So yeah, the look. This is probably the angle that I personally like least Actually, from I a just design point. Realise because the BMW badges are up on the windows, there isn't one on the bullet. No, but this badge is here. Yeah. It's kind of like off centre. Well, it's also, uh, I mean, obviously the BMW badges are there, but just having that XM badge so prominent is really quite a statement for BMW M division yeah. as well. And the rear glass is quite cool. I like how flush it is. It makes the whole thing look yeah. really clean. Stacked tailpipes are nice. Stacked tailpipes, yeah. I personally, look, who am I to cast judgment on this kind of stuff? But that's not my cup of tea. I prefer the the quad exhaust yeah. uh, layout on the M2. I like a more classic look as well, but that'll rate. Let us know what you guys think in the comments. Do you like how this car looks? Um, it's certainly polarizing and it's certainly striking. Whether it's beautiful, I'm not too sure about that, mm. but. I think it has, I think it has some compelling angles. I, I really think at the end of the day, it is the grill that I find most polarizing. And I think that's, if we're being honest, probably true for most folk. We'll get to that in a minute. Before you disappear down the front of the car. <laughs> I need to see it again. Let's, a uh, quote. let's have a quick look at the boot. Oh, that's a flash tote bag. Do you come with the car? <laughs> um, high boot floor, really high boot floor, actually. This and loading plate little pattern here is pretty cool, though. It doesn't look like this is going to come up, so I assume there's no. Imagine lugging around a 23 inch spare alloy. Yeah, that true. would be pretty hectic. Um, Still, that is, uh, I mean, for a coupe style body, that's a it's pretty a deep big boot. boot. Yeah. It's a deep boot, that's for sure. Okay, let's go back around the front and have a look at the, uh, that grill. I'm reminded of the Seinfeld episode. It's the painting of Kramer. It's hideous, yet I cannot look away. Here's an admission. I've never seen an episode of Seinfeld. Oh. <laughs> There's a light sound behind oh, you. Too. I'm leaving. See you later. Ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so the grill. It's huge. 
but it's not quite as uh, maybe imposing as M4, do you think? Yeah, well, what I like about it on the M3 and M4 is the frameless design. So mm. even though it's a massive snout, it, it's not accentuated by a big flashy uh, grill frame. That's true. And it is flashy because not mm. only do you have the, the gold um, exterior sort of framing it, but this section here... Oh, does that light up? It does light up. Oh, can you jump in? I'll try to get it to light up. Because we don't see many cars with any additional LEDs at the front yet. We're seeing it on a lot of concepts. Oh, <laughs> we'll, we'll come back to the exhaust note in a moment, folks. We'll start it up again, but that is quite a statement visually. I actually don't mind it lit up. Sorry, I couldn't hear. <laughs> V8 was in the way. I don't mind it lit up. I reckon it's really cool. Like that's, oh, now I've got second thoughts. I mean, I'm sure there are viewers right now cursing my name, but. No, I like, I like how it lights up. They've won me over, man, just like that, just with the LED. <laughs> you fickle man, you. <laughs> I am. The other thing to point out at the front is the headlight design. So BMW for its sort of um, more premium models has gone for this split design. So mm -hmm. the really sort of sleek, narrow LED up top with the main beam down the bottom. I really like the sort of hook in there. It's, quite, it's a bit of a uh, Tiger Nose grill influenced. Ah. Bit of Peter Schreyer in the headlights. <laughs> Another <laughs> so yeah, Korean said, car influence on, yeah. on BMW. Well, um, we often get a lot of questions about the split headlight design as well, and I, I keep trying to remember, was it Citroen that did it first with, Le, with the Grand Picasso? Oh, probably. The C5, I think. I'm, I'm so sure. But um, either way. Look at this big sort of spot here for the sensors for all the radar control systems, um, front parking sensors, and huge channels here for air to go through. Oh, that one's blanked out. Oh. But this one goes through to... So that might be just for more cooling rather than the brakes. Yeah, looks that way. Although, that's just pointing straight at the wheel. That's interesting. Hmm. Get some engineers in the comments. <laughs> All right, let's have a look inside. We will come back to the exhaust note, folks, but let's continue the design walk around. All right, you jump in there. I'll jump in the other side. Let's address the technical glitch there, you're right? Yeah. So um, we're just starting again here in the middle because obviously at some point I stopped recording somehow. And you we lost... finger the, the record button. I did, mate. I lost How's about five minutes. But it was at a good point because we had just finished with the exterior and now yeah. we're inside. I mentioned at the start of the video that if you thought the exterior was flash, uh, check out the cabin. Yeah. Maybe the first thing to point out is the leather going on in here because there is a lot. But the finish of the leather is worth pointing out because check it out. I don't know if you can see there on screen, but it's kind of got an aged effect through yeah, it. Yeah, I think that's coming up. It's really nice. It's a bit of a patina, like an old wallet. That's right. Or, you know, your, your favourite satchel that you've had mm. for 20 years and it's sort of got a bit of use. So... That's there on the sort of brown walnutty leather on the dash, but also here on the blue leather, I'll use my, my phone torch to get shine a bit of light on that, um, on the seats as well, I think. So, well, these will obviously wear anyway, just by being sat on all day, but, and is that body colored? I can't quite, it looks like it's the same green as- I don't the, think so, I think it's blue. Just a regular blue. Oh, I'm holding my phone up there with no torch on it. <laughs> uh, I think it's blue. The room we're in is quite dimly lit, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it looks blue to me. Um, let's talk about the, uh, the infotainment system and the screen because like most new BMWs, it's got the curved display. Mm. Are you a fan? I am. I mean, curved displays, the big double curved displays are now pretty common. So it's kind of difficult to be wowed by it, I guess, when you see it now. But it's, think... it's well implemented. I like that it's just a really clean, small bezeled frame. Me too. I love that. And it's quite thin. Mm -hmm. I also like BMW's treatment of graphics. Yeah. I think this is probably the space where they sort of neatly combine design that's quite striking and flashy, but the functionality is still really good. Yeah, so. I, I've always felt for me, I mean, as a, as a real tech head, infotainment matters more to me than it probably should. Mm -hmm. uh, I really think BMW is some of the best around for sure. Yeah, nice. Hmm. So the cabin does feel, it feels very expensive in here. It smells, I know that this isn't smell vision, but... <laughs> The smell Sorry, of leather me. is is pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, Can you smell that, viewers? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the headlining, because this is one of the key things that I want to talk about. Check it out. Again, I'll shine my torch up there um, to so cast that, a bit of light. So that's not a, there's no, oh wow, it goes back a long way. It does, doesn't it? Check it out. So it's actually got like a 3D finish to it. So it's got BMW's kind of diamondy, hexagony sort of finish. I don't know if you can see the, how it yeah. goes up and down. Um, 
It's not, unfortunately, like I thought, a retractable headlining for a panoramic sunroof. But lighting's come on in there as well. Yeah, so I managed to find the button in nav where you turn the ambient lighting on. So the ambient lighting's really cool. It's got these LED strips that run down the side. Do you know what this is reminding me of? An aeroplane. These oh, days they've got, yeah. they've got the lighting strips above the um, overhead stowage. That's true. And is it Emirates, it also has kind of a, a triangle-y... I think so, yeah. Um, I might have got that wrong. So this is the A380 of the automotive <laughs> world. Um, but you can choose like lots of different colors, obviously. But yep. the key thing about the lighting here is that apparently it's dynamic. So if you get a phone call or if, you know, there's a maybe, I don't know about this one, but if there's a collision ahead or something like that, hopefully it'll sort of flash and warn you that, um, that something's happened. You won't miss that. No. Sure. Um, you'd like it to flash red, surely, if... Uh, if you're going to I think any any time I'm calling one of our team members, it should flash <laughs> red with klaxon sounds the whole lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like that. I think that's a cool feature, and I know that it you know it, it pleases me in ways that I can't quite explain. Um, <laughs> I just gotta get over how far back it goes. Yeah. Well, speaking of back, let's jump in in the back. Yep. And see how much room is back here because. Well, they did say it's X7 wheelbase. It so. is. And this seat, as you can tell, is pretty heavily reclined and a long way back. Let me just switch my torch off. And I think BMW's engineers, when they were giving us a quick walkthrough this morning, they said it's like a lounge, BMW lounge experience back here is kind of how they're describing it. And you can kind of see why, because pretty much every surface is soft and clad with leather. So even here on the, on the sills, um, so if you're doing some pretty extreme cornering, oh, wow. um, there's another BMW, uh, the, the iX, it also has um, that sort of squishiness there on the, uh, on the edge of the seat. So That's that cool. Adds a little bit of comfort factor. And headroom is great, even though it's a coupe version, so not like the M2 where I was sort of sitting mm. like this. In this car, plenty of headroom. And again, like, I, I kind of dig this. It just um, feels really glamorous in here, I feel. It does. And it does make you feel special, which is what you want for a car that's going to cost 300 grand. Yeah. Should we talk about Rivals? What, a, what Rivals this? I guess like a Lamborghini Urus. Oh, yeah. Uh, and an Aston Martin DBX. I mean, obviously very different cars. For one, neither of them is a FEV. True. But are they, one's a V8 twin turbo, the other's a V10. Is a Lambo V10? Are yours? No. I haven't thought about it in a while. That's uh, a V8 as well. <clears throat> or maybe they do have it. I think they Oh, now you test me. I, sh I should know this. <laughs> what kind of motoring journeys are I should know we this. We get this so much. The amount of information we're expected to remember, Alex, I tell you. Uh, I don't think so. I think... And just like that, Alex has disappeared. Another glitch, I'm afraid, folks. I think my phone might be trying to connect to iDrive. I'm not sure. But, so what is the price of an Aston DBX and an Urus? So an Urus is 100 grand more. So this is 297, Urus is 395, I believe. Uh, mm. And a DBX is 356, so. Okay. It's pretty, I mean, that is a lot more than this car, but it's, it's also pretty brave of BMW to be pricing right up there with this type of car. I mean, obviously X7 gets up there as well. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, bespoke M car, it kind of is trying to challenge uh, Aston Lamborghini. So yeah, no question. I think positioning wise, it feels about right. Yep. Um, in the uh, pricing you can get away with model, it feels about right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So let's start to sum up. We'll answer a couple of questions um, from our readers uh, first. The first one that I want to get to, uh, which I absolutely love, which is from, let me just pull it up, which just is from Nathan Simpson. Nathan Simpson. Does the XM fit through a Guzman and Gomez drive-thru? <laughs> uh, can I you imagine that type of buyer? Buys an XM. That's a baller move in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it will. It's wide for sure. We'll put up the exact width dimension now. I don't know the width of a Guzman <laughs> Gomez drive-through. I'm sure they vary. What is the standard width of a drive-through in Australia? The thing that gives me a little bit of anxiety about thinking taking this through a Guzman and Gomez uh, drive-through is you know sometimes they have like a right-angle turn and they've got quite mm. high gutters. Yeah. Imagine curbing your gold 23-inch wheel. The, rep the replacement cost just gives me the shivers thinking about that. Um, one other quick question is uh, from Levin Farr. What is the towing range of the XM? Everybody wants to know towing with any electrified car. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, and valid. Again, I think it's kind of a baller move. Imagine towing your M2, which you're staring <gasps> at now, to a track day with your XM. Oh, that would be something. That's kind of cool. I dig that. You would get brownie points in my eyes for that. Um, <laughs> 
We'll, again, we'll throw up the exact towing figure, brake towing figure on screen because I neglected to get that from the BMW yep. um, engineers when we spoke about them this morning. But yeah, let's sort of sum up. Look, it's won me over a little bit in the middle, I'll admit, because sort of I was a little bit on the fence about how it looked. It didn't really gel with me personally. I know design's very objective, but in this spec in the middle, I think it looks better in the middle than it does in pictures. Um, and all the stuff that's going on, the sort of the illuminated grill, the, that's cool. the 3D headlining, the aged leather inside, mm. it certainly majors on um, X factor, makes you feel special. And if you ask me, that's what special cars like the two we've got here need to do. Yeah, agreed. Thank you everybody for tuning in to our walk around of the BMW XM. As we said before, we've also got one of the M2. You'll find the link in the description. And if you're watching on your desktop, it should hopefully be at the top of this video as well. If you have any questions, fire away. We'll be sure yeah. to jump in there. And please don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Really does help us out. If you like this sort of dynamic with me and Steve-O as well, this is the first time we've done one of these sort yeah, of videos. Yeah, let us know if you enjoy this concept. It, we did have a couple of glitches as you saw with this one, but I think it was fun. Yeah, I think I really enjoyed it. The M2 one's probably, it was more seamless. Yes. Um, we sort of petered out a little bit with this one, but let us know. Do you want to see more of these videos? Let us know. Awesome. Thanks, everyone.